Are you struggling with power in Space Haven, constantly battling blackouts? Then you should watch this tutorial to the end because we are covering the entirety of the Space Haven power system. Hello Spacefarers, my name is Dracut. Let's dive right into it by starting with the generators. We are getting the Energium power generator for free at the beginning of our game without any research, so let's have a closer look at that one. The description states that it turns 0.0013 Energium into 10 power, which when calculated up results in a total of 7692 power for an entire Energium crystal. Regarding the conversion rate, Axel from Bugbyte was kind enough to confirm my assumption that this happens per second. Also important to know is that those 7692 power are going to last a smaller ship with a lower power consumption longer than a bigger ship. So we could also read this as the Energium power generator is able to produce a maximum of 10 power per second. The more research we put into our power systems, the better generators we get. So let's have a look at the X1 power generator. The first thing we notice is that it requires a different kind of fuel. It requires energy rods instead of energium crystals to operate. Which means we also need the energy refinery researched and built to ensure a constant supply of energy rods. Taking these numbers into account, the X1 power generator generates 15,000 power per energium crystal. And these are the values for the X2 and the X3 power generator. Please also note the difference in power capacity. We are going to need those soon. Enough with power generation for now, let's take a look at how power is consumed. Most of the stuff you are placing on your ship requires constant but very low power. The game refers to this as standby power. Obviously this kind of power does not cause our blackouts. These are caused by power consumption which is kind of an intermittent power usage that I would refer to as operational power because it only occurs when a certain facility is operating or operated. As we can see, those values can become quite excessive compared to the power generation of our initial generators. And that is exactly where power capacity comes into play. Think of it as a battery that can be charged over time and then has the power ready for whenever such a power consumption spike occurs. When operating industrious facilities, the duration of the power spike depends on the skill of the operator. Let us assume our recycler would be operated for about 3 seconds, that would be 60 power total. So to keep industry operating, we need to put it near a strong power capacity. Sure, generators would be ideal, but the space around them is limited. But maybe there is a suitable power node. These these capacity values let us conclude what those power nodes are made for. Knowing this now begs another question, like is it sufficient just to have a big power node where we want to have the industry? Or do those power nodes in between on the way to the generator matter as well? Now I can't answer that question because I don't know your setup around the power node. But I prepared a little experiment to answer the question whether power nodes with higher capacity also provide higher power throughput. When a charged power capacity node is connected to an uncharged one, they are going to distribute the charge evenly between them. So I have charged two of those and after eliminating all the possible disturbances, we are going to connect one through two floor power nodes and the other through two normal power nodes to their uncharged counterparts. If the normal power nodes provide a higher throughput, then the lower power capacity node should light up faster. And clearly that is the case. So if you want to have your industry on the other side of the ship from the generator, I would suggest you also provide a kind of power highway with high capacity power nodes. Now we still have to cover the solar panels and the power capacity node and linking stuff together. So I decided to prepare a little example ship in order to show how I am going to set up such stuff. 
Okay, so this is just a representation of an actual ship because as you can see, no engine, stuff like that. Anyway, we have the generator here and this kind of marks out an industry area. Over here we have living quarters. In here we have a stylized botany section along with its compostors. You probably want those two really close to each other because they are producing stuff the other type needs. And then we have some, you know, special buildings which could be anywhere on our ship. This of course is a late game setup. So you don't have the power capacity nodes or the solar panels until you have researched them. The solar panels you could pretty much put anywhere on your ship. All the power they produce, as long as they are connected to the power grid, will result in the generator not having to produce those power units, thus saving fuel. The power capacity nodes, I personally prefer to have them as a power storage for the deeper part of our ship, where all the living quarters facilities life support, botany and some defenses. Simply because should anything happen to the generator, those power capacity nodes feeding the rest of the ship would give us time to either repair it, wait for another ship to trade fuel or stuff like that. To achieve this, we are connecting to the rest of the ship into the power capacity nodes with unidirectional connections. So all the power that has been let into the depths of our ship is never going to return to the generator or the industry area. Same goes for the industry area. From the power node, we connect to a power capacity node via unidirectional connection. And from the power capacity nodes, we pretty much just use the bidirectional connections and then have some solar panels sparkled in pretty much anywhere in between. As you can see for the rest of the ship, we are pretty much using just the inflow power nodes because most of the stuff we are placing there does not require that much power. As I said, personally, I'd like to have a stronger power node next to the compostors. If you should still experience power outages, then please check whether they are situational. In that case, a power capacity node could help. Or if an area in general needs a higher power throughput, then you would have to adjust your power nodes for higher capacity nodes. This concludes our power tutorial. If you liked the video, then please leave a like. And if you want to know how I play the game, then please check out my Let's Play series on my channel. Thanks for watching and I see you guys next time. Bye.